Number 49. You throw a ball straight up with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second. It passes a tree branch on the way up at a height of 7 meters. How much additional time will pass before the ball passes the tree branch on the way back down? Okay, so let's try to sketch a picture. Now this is one of those problems where the, um, what do you call it, where the framing is going to be really important of the, of the problem. So there's going to be a ball, it's going to be thrown upwards. So let's just detail the ball here. And it's thrown upwards uh, with an initial velocity of 15, 15.0 meters per second. And on the way up, it's going to tra uh, pass this tree branch, right? So let's just say the tree branch is here, okay? So it's going to pass the tree branch. Okay, so it's going to look something like this then. And I'm sure eventually it's going to reach its highest point and then come back down. Right? So this is the tree branch. So what they want us to calculate now, it, it, by the way, it also tells us that the height of the tree branch is 7 meters. Now it doesn't say, well, 7 meters with respect to what? <laughs> but I have to make an assumption that it's 7 meters with respect to the ball. All right, so the, the height here, all the way down to the ball, is going to be 7 meters. Okay? Uh, that should be a safe assumption. So what they're trying to say is they want to now know how much additional time will pass before the ball passes the tree branch on the way back down. So essentially they want us to find, the question is a little vague, but I believe what they're looking for is they're looking for us to find the time between the time when it passes the branch on the way up and the time when it passes the branch on the way down. So they want us to find this time, okay, that I just outlined. This is the time they want. All right, so now, if that's the time that they want us to find, notice how there's some symmetry here, meaning that the point at which uh, the, what are they throwing? A ball. The point at which the ball passes the tree on the way up will be symmetrically the same as the point in which the ball passes the tree on the way down. So this is an important fact because basically what I'm going to think about here is there's essentially, well, I can think of this as, uh, as two parts, all right? So I was going to say three parts. I could break it up into three parts if I'd like, uh, but I'm just going to do two, all right? So the, the two important parts of this problem are this. The first part here will be from the time the ball is released to this particular point right here. Okay, I'll call that part A of the problem. And then part B of the problem will be this symmetrical loop that it'll make. Okay, so I'll consider that now part B. All right, so first let's talk about part A. Okay, so let's label some things that we know for part A. Well, we know that the initial velocity for part A was 15.0 meters per second. Right. We also know that the acceleration due to gravity is going to be negative 9.80 because the ball is in free fall. We also know that the displacement that that uh, ball is traveling is going to be 7 meters. Right, So the x value, that's not a negative sign, but the x value is 7 meters. And specifically it should be 7.00 meters. Right? It's positive because the ball is moving in the positive y direction. That's basically all I know, right? My unknowns then are the time it takes to go from essentially where the ball's starting to then this point. And I also don't know the final velocity here, right? Which would be the, the velocity at this point right here. So the final velocity, okay? That's a question mark. But this is the important one to find. Why? Because the final velocity of part A is going to be the initial velocity of part B. That's how the two frames are connected. Okay, they're connected via the velocity. And you're going to see this pattern come up a bunch. If you watch some of the prior videos, the questions are hard. They're all connected basically via this idea of the final velocity of one part is the initial velocity of the other. That's how we can jump frames. So... This is what I'm going to be looking to solve for, my final velocity for part A. So I know the initial acceleration and the displacement. I want to find the final velocity. So what equation are we going to use on the right-hand side? 
Yeah, it looks like the uh, fourth one would be the best one. So let's write it down. The final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration multiplied by the displacement. So the final velocity, I don't know what it is. Let's leave it as the variable. The initial velocity is 15 uh, meters per second, so 15.0 squared, plus then two times the acceleration, negative 9.80, times then the displacement and it said it's going to be seven meters, right? Okay, so let's clean it up. Let's do some math. So I think this is a 15 squared is 225, but never be too sure. Yeah, check the calculator. 2.25 and the second part now, just plug that into the calculator. It's going to be two times negative 9.8 uh, times seven. Works out to be negative uh, 137, and I gotta have three sig figs, so that looks good. And now I just have to do the subtraction here. So the final velocity squared would be 225 minus that answer. So this works out to be um, 87 point, well, not point, but 88, right? 88. Okay, and this is, it's only two sig figs because both values go out to the ones place. And then I just have to take the square root of that. The final velocity of part A, I'll call it, is square root of 88. So 9.38, 9.38 meters per second. And remember, the important fact now is that this is also equal to the initial velocity of part B, okay? This is how the two frames are connected. So now, and actually, let me change the color here. I'll say that this is equal to the initial velocity of part B. So now I did just find the final velocity, right? But that's also representative of the initial velocity, okay, of part B. So final velocity, I'll say of A, let me just write that in here, is equal to then the initial velocity of part B, and they were both equal to 9.38 meters per second. Okay, so here's the thing. Now, we know the initial velocity of part B. Um, what else do we know? So let's now write down for part B things that we know. We know the initial velocity of part B is going to be 9.38 meters per second. I also actually know the final velocity, right, of part B. You might say, well, how do you know that? There's symmetry, meaning whatever velocity, assuming no air resistance and stuff, Whatever velocity the object had going up at this point will literally be the same velocity at this particular point, assuming the heights are the same. The only difference will be the sign. It's traveling up here and it's traveling down here. So the signs will change, but the magnitude stays the same. So the final velocity is negative 9.38 meters per second. Um, the displacement, right, for part B, I, I don't know, right? I have no idea what that is. So that's a question mark. I also don't know the time. That's another question mark, but I do know the acceleration, right? It's again in free fall, so negative 9.80 meters per second squared. Now, remember, they're asking us, go back to the question. It says, how much additional time will pass before the pa ball passes the tree branch on the way back down? So remember, I'm looking for the time it takes to go from this location to this location. So that's this variable right here in my givens. So what I'm thinking about now, do I know a formula that relates initial velocity, final velocity, and acceleration and time? Yeah, right, look at the top formula, the first formula. We know that, okay? So the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. So the final velocity again was negative 9.38. The initial velocity was 9.38 plus the acceleration, which was negative 9.80, multiplied by t. So this is negative 9 point, let's clean it up a little bit, equals uh, 9.38 plus, well, minus, right? Minus 9, 9.80, what's going on? There we go. So now what, what am I gonna do? Let me subtract this value on over, 9.38 minus 9.38. That get canceled, so just take out the calculator, 9.38 and itself again should be should work out to be negative 18 point we got around 18.8 we got to have three significant figures 
is equal to negative 9.80 T. And look, when we take the signs into account, notice how now the value of the time is gonna become positive, which we know it should. So the time value here oh, is going to be, so 18.8 .8 divided by 9.8. So we get 1.92. 1.92 seconds. And that will now be the answer for this, because this is how much additional time will pass before it passes the tree branch on the way back down. All right. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. I hope this helped. And remember, if it did, please subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.